A couple of days ago I made a video and posted it to YouTube and it was called Affinity Photo working with another app or plugin to make a watercolour image. Now basically what I did was got an image and I used three different programs. It was FilterForge, Archivis Airbrush and PhotoSketcher and I used those three programs to alter the image and to make three different types of watercolour image out of this. Um, and it does include links in the description here about where you can get these free programs. What it got me thinking is that you know, why can't we do this in Affinity Photo without using part of the way an outside program um, to sort of replace the filter that Affinity Photo doesn't have. So I've been tinkering and trying different things. Um, if I come back to Affinity Photo, this was the image that I used in that previous video. And I'm going to be using this one again and I, I'm also going to be using this image. Both of these images come from pixabay.com and I will include links to both of these in the description for this video but basically I'm not going to go into this too deeply but basically I just selected both of these girls ladies which I'm to call them um, let me increase the brush size of this and I'm using the I just quickly use the selection brush tool and I quickly selected without too much finesse each of these girls and I think that's pretty much it that's good enough for this little quick demonstration and once I selected them um, then I just pressed Control and J or Command and J on a Mac which will then isolate and get rid of the background so I press con control and D to get rid of the selection area and then I exported this layer I've turned the back layer off exported this layer as a PNG so I, d I have a blank background so I then have both of these girls cut out from into PNG form and making um, the start for each of these various ways I'm going to show you to make watercolours. So I will shut down these pictures and I'll come back in a minute so just hang on. So for the next part of this introduction I just want to show you some of the images that I've made using these various um, ways I'm going to show you and the end results. Now I'm not going to claim they're all brilliant or perfect and um, or anything like that but they are all made just in Affinity Photo. No outside program are used to help this. Um, so these are the f four examples that, are, that I have made in practicing this. and sort of varying degrees of success and, or failure and you can even change it into a black and white image to sort of make it look like a drawing. Um, as I said in the first video because the brush strokes you use, the colours you use or what have you are going to be different every time I can't show you an exact way of making a replica of every picture it's a sort of bit hit and miss every time you do this as to how it will end up you will just have to tinker with it as you go along for your own personal taste because um, what I like you may dislike and you may want to do it slightly differently and I will also say that the, I'm going to make this sort of tutorial in, into three different parts and show three different ways of getting these results um, they are all basically variations on the same theme 
and the blend modes you use, the brushes you use, and the colours you use. It's all down to your own personal taste, and the colours, uh, the image that you end up with, is can be different every time you do this. So you don't have to stick with my three ways. You could use a slight variation on one of them and get some somewhere else and a different result but hopefully it will end up looking you know like a fairly good watercolor type image so I'm going to close down these images and start again so I'll be back in a minute okay let's start the tutorial properly now I've downloaded again from pixabay.com this texture of sort of note paper vellum paper um, you can use any sort of background you want um, but sort of something with a bit of texture will help because we want to show that texture through to make it look more like a watercolor painting um, I will, again I will add a link to this image in the description but you can use your own and I've also got the image of the lady that's already cut out and in PNG form so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click this layer come to copy come to my texture and then edit and paste now this image is much bigger than the paper so I'll just come to the move tool come to one of the corners hold down the control key which I think is command on a Mac and just drag this inwards and then just reposition this yes I'm quite happy with that I mean I'm, I'm going to crop some of this off later on anyway but I'll leave it like that at the moment so once you are happy with that position and what have you um, you know try not to move it because you know it will end up might end up ruining the results because we're using masks and things like that so once you're happy with it I mean you could always put a padlock on on particular by highlighting it and just clicking that to lock it so it won't be you can't alter it in size anymore sort of thing but it, that you don't have to do that it's just a slight pr um, precaution so the first thing I want to do with that layer highlighted is come up to the select menu and then do selection from layer and it will put the selection area around the image that you have there and because it's PNG with no background it will just automatically find the edges for us so once we have the selected area um, I'm going to add a layer mask and to do this I just click on this icon here and it will add a layer mask and sort of group it in with that particular image now I can press Control and D to get rid of that selection area and I will open up this group here and the mask is the one that is highlighted and then I'm going to right click that mask and click copy and then I will highlight the image layer again and this time I will edit and paste so I've got a copy of that mask up at the top of this stack here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this mask um, so it will be rather than white on the inside black on the outside it will be black on the outside and uh, white and yeah in, it will swap around anyway I'll click on layer and then just come to invert or you can do control and I so that will change which area that is masking but I'm going to need that later but so I will just hide that for the minute and we will come back to that later 
Right, so coming back to this layer here, again I will open up the group here and I will highlight the mask. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint black onto the mask. Um, so I need the brush tool which is, I always lose this one, it's here somewhere. Oh, let's just press B. I know it's B. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's in the menu. We've had it on a different menu, which is why I couldn't see it. But just pressing B a few times will get you back to the brush tool. So now we need a brush tip. And as we're going for a watercolor type picture, I'm going to select one of the various watercolor options I have here, which I don't want to do. So I have this watercolor shape here, but I do need to reduce the opacity of this down quite a bit. So anywhere around the 10, 15% mark. and make sure the color we have is black. And then I'm just going to click a couple of times over this image just to sort of get a bit of texture in there. Let me pick a different brush. That's one maybe. And again, you have to remember to lower the opacity down. Change it to 14 this time. And then it's just a case of Add in a little bit of texture here and there. Let's try a different watercolor set this time. That's what I've got here, watercolor brush pack two. Um, let's try that one again, remembering to lower the opacity. We're just sort of giving the feeling of a bit of texture within the image without taking too much of the image away you know so you can still see it how much you want to remove is up to you but I'm going to leave that at that point if you feel that you've gone a bit too far and taken away some of the image you can always come back to the white as your foreground color. And when you click on it, it will bring back some of the image. So that is an option for you. If you think, if you go a bit too far, you can always save what, what any mistakes you've made by using white to bring back some of the image, but I will leave mine as it is. Right, next thing I want to do is to highlight the background texture and I'm going to add a pixel layer above that, a blank pixel layer. And what I will do is this mask that is hidden at the top here, I'll just make that visible again and then I'm going to click and drag this down and put it into the gr and group with that blank pixel layer that I made just now. So that mask is now grouped with that pixel layer. But I want the pixel layer highlighted, not the mask. So now we're going to paint onto this layer and we can pick any color that we want. Let's go for a, a random orange color. Um, let's just push the opacity up a bit here so you can see that. Yeah, so as you can see, because it is behind this background layer here, um, image layer, I can paint a few blobs on there. I can change brush. 
Let's try that one. Change color. And try different things. Don't like that brush so much. Let me press Control and Z a couple of times. Let me try a different brush tip. Let's try this one. That's it. Lower the opacity down again. I, I do find that lighter color ranges work better. You know, if you're going to use a blue, use a light blue or, you know, an, an orange or a yellow. But you can use darker colors, but let me try it with this red. Let's try a different brush. Let's go back up to, um, where is it? Some daub watercolors here. Let's try that one. Change the size of that. Let's press Ctrl and Z on that. I forgot to lower the opacity. Let's go down to about 30% on that one. And then just paint up that a few times. Right. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So That is okay, so I'll leave that at that for now. Right, what you could do now, if you want, is if I highlight the top layer image and add an adjustment of levels, you could just tinker with this. Remember, we are sort of, it's affecting the whole image, not just the image of the girl but the whole image and just sort of tinker with how much you want this to look sharper or lighter um, and again even even this one here you could lower the opacity of that just to get a a slightly different feel to it. Yes, I'm sort of quite happy with that. So let me just crop this. I don't necessarily need all of that at the top there. So there we have sort of version one of this. So you can save or and better still export this under a new name um, you can also let me just highlight this top layer you could add a black and white adjustment now this is true on all of these versions um, and then just see which works best for your particular image yeah see that one's quite good so again you can export this save this under yet another new name so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to hide that black and white adjustment and before I sort of close this down and move on to the next possible way of making a watercolor image what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and highlight this image layer and this is where you can mess around with blend modes to see what might work better um, there are quite a few I mean, obviously, you know, there's various lots of different blend modes that you could use. See that one there, color burn, which gives a more drawing type feeling. I think, if I remember rightly, average works quite good. Um, 
and I think hard light and vivid light can work quite well. See, hard light is quite a good option. So, don't just stick with the normal blend mode. Try all sorts of different blend modes. If, if I remember correctly, when I first practiced this, I liked color burn best. So I can always come back to my levels adjustment and just alter that a little bit to get a slightly different look to it. So again you could export this and again you could add the black and white adjustment and make adjustments accordingly to the new settings and find a, a way that this works something like that and save that under a new name so that is like four different options I've had just from one way of making this so I'm going to reset things and I'll be back in a little while to show you version 2 right moving on to version 2 of this watercolor tutorial um, I've closed down some of the other images and I've reloaded the paper texture and then I've just got this girl in the white dress with the background removed so I'm just going to copy that image come to my texture image and paste this image in and then I'm just going to move her into position like so and then I'm just going to add a padlock to help keep that in place come off that tool a second so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to have a look at the channels tab which is the fourth one along in this bottom panel here and we're going to look through the different composite layers just as find one that's got a nice sort of bit of contrast a lot of dark areas or light areas and the blue one seems to be about the best in here although the green one doesn't look too bad but I'm going to go with the blue so I'll just click this reset button to bring back all the colors and on the blue background layer down here I'm going to right click that and create mask layer so it will make a mask from that selection and then I'm just going to duplicate this and then I'm going to hide this one highlight the one that is visible and click and drag it down so it's grouped with the image layer so you just need to make sure that it is the mask that is highlighted come to your paintbrush tool make sure white is your foreground color and select whichever brush tips you want and have a lowish um, opacity and then it's just a case of painting on this image here and this time rather than taking some of that image away we are bringing it back because we are painting white onto what is basically a black layer mask so it's sort of a reverse process of what we did before just lower the opacity of this brush so it's just a case here of how much detail you want to bring back using this method rather than the other method is where you're taking detail away let's try a different brush again let's use this one here I quite like this one 
again I'm going to lower the opacity let's try around the 17% mark I mean probably the eyes is probably the area that is best to bring back some details so right I'm going to leave Oh, so I'm going to leave it. I'll keep tinkering. Right, I'm going to leave that alone now. So that is that layer uh, process done. So now I'm going to click on this layer mask that's hidden at the moment, but I'm going to add a pixel layer above that. Right, now I'm going to paint onto this, but I've got the paintbrush selected. I'm going to change the color. Now, I, I had, like I said before, I find that the lighter colors do work best. So I'm going to try this orangey color here. And again, I'm going to lower the opacity down to about 10% or something like that. Now you can paint over the image a little bit if but it's mainly the background we are aiming for here. So I'm just gonna put a few dots and splashes here and there. Um change let's change brush tips, let's try let's try that one, try a different colour, let's try a pinky color lower the opacity down this one slightly higher reduce the size of it all right like I said you can add a little bit of color but I wouldn't let her go too mad with that because at this stage it's very hard to tell how this will affect the image. Let's just go with one more brush and one more colour. Let's try try that one. And we'll go for a, maybe a very slightly darker green. And an opacity of about 20%. Let's try that. So, See what that looks like. Right. Yes, I think that'll do there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this mask that is hidden. I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to move that mask into and be part of that group there it did group it, yes it did um, and then I'm going to highlight the pixel layer and then I'm going to have absolutely no effect whatsoever not what I wanted it to do let me just hide that mask again Maybe I should have inverted it. Let's try inverting it. That's better. What I forgot to do was to invert that hidden mask. So it brings back the background and doesn't affect the image so much. Right. Sorry about that error. Um, so we have our second version again like before you could add say, a levels adjustment here and just find a setting or um, look that you're happy with
and then you can crop it if need be if your image needs that export this then you could add the black and white adjustment and again just muck around with the settings to find something that works for your particular image so again you could export that right what you can what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hide those two adjustments I've added because we can like before tinker with the blend modes um, for these various layers again to get different effects um, and different looks so you know you're not stuck with just one look um, now I personally if I when I did this before I I quite liked having hard light on both the layers and it gives it that sort of more wishy-washy um, watercolor type feel to it and if I just bring back the levels adjustment double click on that I can just alter this accordingly because of, because of this hard light option the background colors are a little bit lost but the actual image of the girl is now looking a bit more to my mind what a watercolor would look like I mean I could maybe just tinker with the blend mode for that background area and find one that's colors not too bad because it does show the color and I've still got this sort of more softer looking watercolor for the image of the girl so yeah so I've got color for that layer and hard light blend mode for that layer so I can export that now and then I can bring back the black and white adjustment and just tinker with this until I'm happy with that so I've got I can now export the black and white version of this so I'm going to reset things and then we will move on to version 3 okay moving on to version 3 of this watercolor tutorial again I've opened the paper again again I'm going to use this image here so I'm just going to copy and paste reposition resize if necessary which I will leave there I'll just add the padlock on that come off that tool and then I'm going to duplicate this background you can either just use control and J command and J or just use this option here and then I'm going to add the adjustment black and white adjustment and you can just tweak the settings a bit I'm just going to lower the red down slightly and the magenta and leave it at that but rather than just closing this and keeping it as a layer I'm going to merge that so that will merge into this black and white layer and then I'm going to 
come up to layer and invert or control and I so we have this sort of negative image and then I'm going to come to the select menu and selection from layer and then I am going to add a layer mask just by clicking on that image there and then I can press Control and D to get rid of the selection area so I'm just going to hide this background layer for the moment and I'm going to add a pixel layer so it is now between those two background layers there and then I'm going to come to a brush tool and select whichever brush tip you want and a color that you want let's try a green this time the opacity is quite low we've got this on 19 percent and I'm just going to paint around the outside let's try a different brush and a different color let's go for a somewhere in the red range lower the opacity again just to help give it a bit of texture again let's try a different one let's try that one and again change the colour and um, what we've got we've got green and red so far we'll go for a light blue again I'm going to stick with the lighter colours because I've I do think it works better change the size a bit right I will leave that at that right so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click and drag this pixel layer to the top and then click and highlight this f uh, highest background layer and I'm just going to change the blend mode of this to uh, soft light and then bring back this image here and I'm just going to look for a blend mode that looks quite good on here hard light it's not too bad pin light is quite good and uh, where were we linear light it's not too bad uh, i'll go with hard light right so if i highlight this pixel layer here i mean i can add a bit more color onto the image itself or I can use the eraser tool which is that one there? eraser brush I'm going to have the hardness down quite low and we have the opacity down lowish as well and then I'll just erase some of this painting not necessarily all of it but just some especially around the face area so you had that effect there and you could now export this and a bit like before you can add the levels 
adjustment and find a setting that works for you and your particular taste we go with that for my taste on this one and then add the black and white adjustment and again tinker with the settings to get a feeling and taste that you like yeah I quite like that one and then you could expect export this as your black and white version um, one thing I will do before I go much further is just crop that and then export that so basically that is the end of this tutorial I'm sorry it's very long but there's three different ver ways of getting the end results and using various blend modes different brushes you will always get different effects and I'm sure there's other variations on the same thing that you could try but thank you for watching and goodbye